The Prusa Mini is a pretty damn good machine. As it stands, we're gonna add a little bit of something to make it a whole lot easier. Let's upgrade a Prusa Mini with a Revo Micro. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, make sure to leave a like and get subscribed. We do awesome videos like this couple of days a week. This is a Prusa Mini. A lot of you know that we are kind of Prusa fanboys here at 3D Musketeers and we don't hide it. We're not paid to say that, but you know, maybe one day we'll get lucky. This is one of four Prusa Mini Pluses that are on the fleet. This one is our away machine. It's the machine that I huck into my car when it's time to go to an event because it's got the carry handle and we've got the relocator for the USB up to the front. There are no other mods done to this machine. It, these are just more cosmetic and ease of use mods. In fact, this one had a dead filament sensor that I never bothered to replace. So there's that. Today, we are going to upgrade this bad girl to the Revo Micro, but we're also going to add this part. This is a new extruder plate from my buddy Jordan, and he goes by Mad Monkey on all the social medias. Printed in carbon fiber reinforced PETG with that diamond nozzle that we've been testing out. We'll card to those videos so you guys can take a look. But this is a pretty straightforward upgrade. In fact, E3D has an entire walkthrough on how to do it right on their website. We'll link to it in the description. So if you choose to do your Prusa Mini over to a Revo Micro, you absolutely can. This is the second edition that actually reuses the stock cooling fan. While I don't necessarily mind the little tiny fan the Revo Micro comes with, I can't be bothered. It's a lot easier to reuse as much of the original components as possible, in my humble opinion. But let's get started. And oh yeah, because we are doing the Mad Monkey upgrade to the extruder, we are going to be switching over to some Capricorn Bowden tube. Thanks for Capricorn for sending this over to us. Full disclosure, of course, we did not pay for this. It came free of charge. They just wanted us to use it in a video and, well, I would have used it anyways, so this happens to work out perfectly for the both of us. It came with a couple of cutters, a bunch of tubing, and the Bowden connectors that we're going to need because there are currently like three or four pieces of PTFE inside of this arrangement. With this upgrade part, it takes it to one. That's a big deal. So first thing we gotta do is start disassembling this hot end assembly here. And I guess getting the right tool probably wouldn't hurt. Okay, next up, it's time to remove this Bowden coupler. Fun fact about this particular Prusa Mini, we had it out in an event and it absolutely jammed the hot end while everybody was at a talk from a speaker. And in that time the speaker was talking, I completely disassembled the hot end, pulled the nozzle out and torched it to clear the clog because I was on the road and I didn't have any of my tools with me. It actually worked out really well in the end. making sure that we can remove everything. And if this one screws fine, the other one should be happy as well. Now it's time to go ahead and install the Revo. This is so easy. Just put it on, screw it in till it's tight, and literally you have it in there. This is printed a little bit more sparsely than they recommend. They recommended four perimeters and 40% infill. I did not see that until just now. So so work's gonna be like this. And they do want the wires coming out like this. That's the nice thing about the Revo. You can reposition this any way you want easily because it basically floats. It's a really, really nice feature about the Revo. It's amazing how easy this thing is to pull apart and get together. And because this is carbon fiber PETG, it's not going anywhere. Wait, hold on. It's not going anywhere. That's for our male audience, which is like 99% of you. Hi, the one female viewer, probably my mom or Amber. How are you doing today? Wow, that was a little bit easier than I was expecting. So now it's telling us that it wants to do the Bowden connector. We're gonna go ahead and skip that because 
of course, we're going to redo this entire section. So let's do that. Very much a see a screw, move a screw for this backside. And apparently one of the feet on my printer is missing. Okay, and we are going to replace the entire plate here this plate and we're gonna end up reusing a lot of the stuff oh some garbage in there so if it was in here it's basically gonna get reused is how that's gonna work including the boat tube that is truly one of the worst things to install on these that is our old extruder assembly we don't need that where we're going because we are installing the mad monkey mm10 just gonna put the extruder spring back in because it's a little bit easier to do when it's all together like that oh god my first layer is a little close that means this probably needs to be cut a little bit to fit i've got a bench vise over there so i think i'm just gonna go use that although i might just put it up here and smack the shit out of it i've got a knife let me see if i can just custom chamfer oh yeah that's all she needed. Little custom chamfer work. You want to be careful with ball bearings. You don't want to put any metal forces onto them. You can be careful if you do it correctly. Okay, got the bearing pressed in. Just have to push a couple of things in. And the whole thing slide right in. One last screw and we're done with the Mad Monkey upgrade. And I, I swear, this is one of the easiest upgrades that I don't understand why it doesn't come like this from the factory. And then the final piece of this is one of the Bowden couplers that can go all the way through. And that will just thread on right into here. Might need a little bit of persuasion, that's okay. We've got a pair of janky pliers to do that. You should probably use what I'm guessing to be a 10 mil, but as you car guys know or don't know, where's your 10 mil? It's what I thought. So let's be realistic. Probably gonna use the pre suppliers. Beautiful. Get this fan reinstalled. Just so it's not hanging and bothering me. And because we chose addition two, we don't have to deal with the tiny fan or any of that excess wiring. However, we are gonna have to do some wiring. It's a thing you either love or hate about the Perusas, it's their cable management. Cause it's either amazing and you love it, or it's a rightful pain and you hate it. Me, I tend to like it, but this is all wound up, not in a way that I like it. So most likely I'm just gonna pull the thermistor from here because well, that's just gonna be easier and I know it should be pretty loose. There we go. Cause the wires do kind of split, but I guess I can also trace it back here. So this is where we're probably not gonna have some great footage and I apologize for that. I'm working in the box here and if you follow along the directions from E3D, you'll be just fine. Literally the thermistor is wired in between the stepper motor cable. So there are easier ways to get around this and I'm gonna take one of them, which is to undo the cable itself. Next up, heater. We can go ahead and pull that out. Okay, old hot end is free. Now don't get rid of this, especially if you have another mini, cause you know, spare parts. They don't tell you that this is not a drop-in kit. Eh, it kind of is. Okay, for the heater wire, we have to go back to our old heater here and we've got one of these connectors. We gotta get that thing apart and take everything off. So I guess you will need a flathead screwdriver. Jeez, these things were torqued down by the Hulk. They're done at the Prusa factory, so you know it's quality. We have our new wires, already have ferrules on them. And the nice thing about heaters, they are not polarized, at least, at this time. So everything should just easily go right back together. This I'm fairly certain is our thermistor wire, but let's verify. It is a different cable. It's not the same cable, but it does fit. So it's no big deal. Now, arguably the hardest part about this entire thing is feeding all the cables through. Now you could choose to just solder it. I didn't feel like that, so I didn't do it. It would give you quite a cleaner look because you don't have to deal with hiding the connectors anywhere. But should I decide to make any changes down the road, it is way easier this way. I find all of this easier to do when it's all kind of put together. Let's verify we've got enough cable. Gonna give it, yeah, not that much should be fine. I'm gonna put in the cables that I need secondarily because when I take everything back out again, if I choose to, they'll be right on the top and not intermixed like we just had with that thermistor wire. So I won't have to take it apart. 
Full disclosure, E3D did send us the Revo Micro and the Revo 6 completely free of charge. And that was because of our interview with Sanjay. He wanted us to have them, so they went ahead and sent them over. There has got to be a better way for this. Like seriously, the hardest part of this is the friggin' cable management. And I'm sure there's a printed part that I didn't get. So if you wanna make fun of me, put the printed part down in the comments. That would make this really easy. Okay, so the fun thing when you realize you have way too much cable, you have to pull it through and hope that you don't do exactly what I just did, which is pull it out of its sheathing. That much is plenty. So we're gonna have some left over. Totally fine, we'll stuff it into the control box. Small one goes on here, big one goes on to there. And really, if we wanted to do it, we could keep pulling it through. These just wouldn't make it into that little clip. Yeah, they could ride up there, no problem, which is probably where they're going to sit. Everything fits in there, so we're just gonna Stuff it in there, pretend it doesn't exist, like how some of you handle your cleaning, or lack thereof. Remember kids, out of sight, out of mind. And the final piece is this cable management hook here. We opted to not put these inside. It'll be a lot easier to keep them out like that. Okay. Gonna need a few zip ties. I'll be right back for those. Okay, zip ties in hand. Now time to get this thing taken care of. We will zip tie these down there too, so we don't strain the actual cable. So let's do that first. That's important because copper will work hard in, as long as we're not applying too much pressure here. Because the nice thing is with the Revo, of course, one-handed nozzle change when it's cold. Boom, nozzle's out. And hold on, wait for it. Time! Editor, what was my time for that? It was like 20 seconds. It wasn't bad. Now comes the time for the cap tube. The nice thing about cap tube, and the thing that I love about Capricorn Bowden tube, it is like a great size. All right, so to do this, let's turn the printer towards you guys. We have to locate the little clip on the Bowden connector back here, which we can grab and remove. Now don't worry, sometimes these do go flying. It is totally fine. We're gonna feed this in till it stops. And then, gonna kind of follow the cable wrap here. We'll cut it somewhere along there. Now, thing with Capricorn tubing, or any Bowden tubing, you're gonna wanna cut it the designated cutting tool so that you get a clean cut. Oh. Okay, I cut it a little long. Rather have it a little bit too long than a little bit too short, right gentlemen? It bothered me, so I cut it down. Okay, now I put the clip on, and all this clip does is it ensures that the Bowden connector stays locked. I find it is helpful to use a knife to pull up the Bowden tube, just so you know it is properly locked. And there you go, the definition of not going anywhere. And with that, we're done. It's been 52 and a half minutes of raw recording which included me getting everything set up, the audio cued and everything. So this is sub one hour. And with the Mad Monkey M10 system here, it makes it so much easier to run these printers. Seriously, it's way less, but there's so many extra pieces of bone in tube. You have to deal with the crush. No, no, just no, nope, nope. This solves all of those problems. And you go from all of this nonsense to this E3D Revo Micro. Let's get it plugged in and let's make sure we didn't screw anything up. And I even have the soldering iron out thinking I needed to solder. Nope, it's a no solder kit, ladies and gentlemen. It's a no solder kit, which blows my mind, man. Blows my freaking mind. Fans all running. Temps are clean. It says 30 on the hot end, 29 on the bed. Yeah, it's hot in here. Um, it's real hot in here. But there you guys go. That's it. That is a Revo Micro installed on a Prusa Mini. It is so easy. And now I can easily do one-handed, check this, one-handed nozzle changes when it's cold. When it's cold, you can't do that any other way. This is the only way to do it. I can even do it without friggin' looking. Just jiggle it around till it fits. Oh, the comments, oh, the comments. <laughs> All I gotta do here is clip off the ends of these zip ties, so it looks factory, and I'm calling that project officially done. Less than one hour, you can upgrade your Prusa Mini 
to run an E3D Revo. And I hear it's even easier with the Revo 6 on the Mark III S. Actually, Joel Telling just put out a video on it, and I saw it about 20 minutes before recording this video. So, this was already in my calendar, okay? I'm sorry. I love the Prusa Mini. It is my absolute winner for a budget printer, even with the new price increase. It does put this thing over $500-ish to the door. However, I still think it is absolutely worth every single penny. And if you throw a Revo on there and this Mad Monkey MM10 upgrade kit, you're changing barely anything about it. You're doing no soldering, no difficult wiring, and the entire system from E3D is easy to follow along. And when you put all of that together, this is a cheap upgrade. Hell, my time is technically worth less than this Revo. It's pretty awesome. I'm really excited for it. These things are absolutely amazing, seriously. And I, I highly recommend if you hate changing nozzles that you look at the E3D Revo system because it is so much easier. And with the heater core, with the integrated thermistor and the PTC heater elements so it can only get so hot, this to me is really where hot ends need to move in terms of technology. As you saw, really, really easy system to put together and use. The Revo system from E3D, I really, really do enjoy. And I think you all will as well. And for less than about 150 bucks for the entire kit obsidian nozzles coming soon tm and when you look at getting the extra nozzles with their wonderful packaging and with the micro you get everything you need to install it on basically any printer and of course the revo 6 is a dead drop in for a e3d v6 it's a complete replacement for it and they come with all the cables you need to make this work and to me that is part of why I will continue to support E3D. The bummer for this, although it's a bummer for some people, I think it's fine, is that this thing is not 100% open source, but they did put a lot of effort into it just to have other companies steal it. I understand their pains behind it. And integrated silicone socks. You don't need these anymore. Get the heck out of here. But yeah, guys, that's all I got for you today. Comment down below. Let me know what you think of this upgrade. I really enjoy doing things like this. And this is going to make our printer that we take on the road even more reliable and so much easier to fix. I'm excited. And I hope you all are as well. But stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video and a massive thank you goes out to all of our Patreon and YouTube channel member supporters. If you want to support the efforts that we do here on the channel, you can head over to patreon.com slash 3D Musketeers and join for as little as $1 a month to help us make awesome videos just like this. And for the $5 tier and higher, you get your name listed right next to me while I'm doing this entire outro. Right below me will be my first look at the E3D Revo system. Uh, spoiler alert, I love it, and I still do. And next to that is an older video, but it still checks out. My favorite budget printers, and uh, another spoiler alert, this thing came out on top. I will see you all down in those comments, and in the next one, take care.